It is widely accepted that the superior tone of the EMG gramophones made by the EM Gin Company derives, among other things, from the horn made of papier plique. As an experiment, I decided to make a gramophone with such a horn, choosing as the starting point the trademark model, well known from the painting. There were two reasons, ease of construction and the fact that the length of the travelling arm, some 16 inches or 40 centimetres, causes the needle to move in the line of the groove with minimal sideways pressure and thus less hiss and crackle than with the shorter arm of a more modern gramophone, whose needle follows an arcuate path across the record. Certain refinements were made. The motor, deck plate and turntable are a Garrard number 30. The sound box is a Columbia number 9, for no better reason than that I had one handy. The bracket which supports the horn is of wood, to deaden transmission of any motor vibration, and the travelling arm is supported on a gimbaled rotary joint for ease of movement in all directions. The travelling arm is of wood and extends beyond the pivot point, and the horn is mounted beyond the pivot so that the weight of the horn and sound box on the record is lessened. A slidable lead weight is provided so that with this at the distal end of the arm, the tracking weight of the needle is half an ounce, and with it nearest the sound box, the weight is five ounces, which is the sort of tracking weight that occurs with a cabinet gramophone. Different records respond better to different tracking weights. The optimum weight can only be determined empirically. Instead of the leather elbow of a trademark model, a curved metal tube is used, and this was built into the horn. Instead of the biconical horn of the trademark model, the horn is exponential. The mould used was the horn of an Edison Bell discophone from around 1910, which was clad with cardboard from cereal packets, then kitchen cling film as a release coating. Some 30 layers of paper were used, beginning with two of white paper then continuing with strips of newspaper and finishing with two layers of white paper, all glued using wallpaper paste. Unfortunately, on long-term drying out, the different papers exhibited differential shrinkage, leaving the horn with a crinkly inner surface. The horn was spray-painted with car enamel. The above title derives from the gramophone being entirely experimental and made in Monmouth. Before anyone asks, it is not for sale and I am emphatically not going into production. There follows a recording of Francesco Tamagno singing Coriam Coriamo from Rossini's William Tell, which has not been subjected to any kind of clean-up procedure. Oh! <laughs> 